This is 11.4 Blood Vessel Notes. The essential question is, what are the differences between arteries, veins, and capillaries? And what are the locations and functions of the major blood vessels of the body? The vascular part of the word cardiovascular refers to blood vessels. And blood vessels are to carry blood back and away from the heart. The arteries are major blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart. Just think of away starts with an A and artery starts with an A. They carry blood away and then they're going to, as they get further away from the heart, they're going to branch into smaller blood vessels called arterioles. And then they become even smaller and then they become the capillaries. So arterioles are between the arteries, which are bigger, and then the capillaries, which are smaller. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels, and they are a connection between the arterioles and the venules. Venules are the smaller veins. Remember that majority of the arteries, except for the pulmonary arteries, carry highly oxygenated blood. Once the blood goes through the capillaries, that's where the gas exchange occurs, which means that the arterioles, as it moves the blood into the capillary, the oxygen leaves the capillaries into the uh, body tissue. And at the same time, the body tissue has a high concentration of carbon dioxide, which then moves into the capillaries. And then that because the blood now has lost the oxygen it is going to be low in oxygen and it's going to change color and it's going to be blue so by the time it leaves the capillaries and gets inside the venules now it's low in oxygen and needs to go back to the heart to pick up more oxygen now as the blood leaves the capillaries and enters the venules which are the small veins the venules are the connection between the capillaries and the veins, which are bigger blood vessels. So now, the, as the mo blood moves into the venules, it is making its way back to the heart. So from the venules, then it will continue on to bigger blood vessels called the veins, and then it's going to then, all of the veins are going to pull in to the heart to get more oxygen. Notice that the blood vessels near the heart is much bigger and as the blood moves from the arteries into the arterioles which are smaller than the capillaries being the really really small blood vessels then as it makes its way back to the heart through the venules is now getting a little bit bigger then it goes into the vein which are bigger and then by the time it gets back to the heart then the blood vessel is going to be large. So near the heart, starts off big, and then as it gets further away from the heart and closer to the body tissue, the blood vessels get smaller. There are three major layers to the wall of the blood vessel with some connective tissue in um, between for strength and some elasticity. The most internal layer the layer that is closest to the blood is the tunica intima. The word tunica, like tunic, means layer. And the tunica intima is also the endothelial layer or endothelium. Then surrounding the tunica intima is tuni tunica media. This is the middle layer and also it's the muscular layer, which is made up of smooth muscles. Remember that the smooth muscles are in the control of the autonomic nervous system and the control of how wide and how narrow blood vessels get is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system and they control the, um, the diameter of the blood vessel. So when the blood vessels are open or dilated big, then there's going to be more blood flowing. When the blood vessels are constricted, there is going to be less blood flowing. The most outer layer is the tunica externa, 
and it is mostly fibrous connective tissue and it provides the strength so that the blood vessel does not stretch out too much because especially in the arteries if the blood vessels are stretched too much then it cannot sustain the pressure to be able to uh, move the blood. Note that the both the artery and vein both have the three layers but notice the thickness of the layers vary, especially the tunica and media, which is the middle layer. The capillary, on the other hand, only has one layer. It is only one layer thick. And it has to do with the fact that capillary, their job is for gas exchange. It needs to be thin enough so things can pass through easily. There are major differences between the different blood vessels. Arteries have the thickest layer which technically the uh, tunica interna and tunica externa are pretty much the same uh, width, but the tunica media is much thicker in the arteries than in the veins. This creates a smaller lumen. So lumen is the space inside the blood vessel because the general diameter of the vein and arteries are pretty similar, but because artery is thicker, it has a uh, smaller space inside the blood vessel. Uh, remember that the reason that the arteries have thick wall is because they carry high pressure blood. The pressure is created by the heart. Blood in the arteries is created by a force, is created by the pumping of the heart. Veins, on the other hand, have a thinner tunica medium, which means that it's going to have an overall uh, narrower wall. And the reason for that is because they don't carry very high pressure blood. And because they have a thinner wall, they're going to have a larger lumen, which is the space inside. So they are able to carry more blood than the arteries. Since there is no pressure in the vein, the blood in the veins are moved by the uh, contraction of the skeletal muscles that are surrounding the veins. So when there is movement, you have better circulation in the veins. When you stand still or don't move for a while, your legs can fall asleep because that, you know, the lack of the skeletal muscles moving causes the blood flow in the veins to slow down. Because veins have low pressure blood and the blood is moved by the milking action of the skeletal muscle, the, there is a tendency for the blood to want to go back to where it was before, especially looking at the veins in the legs. When that, the blood in the veins in the legs are trying to bring the uh, blood back to the heart, then it has to fight gravity. So they have something called the mini valves all along the uh, veins that prevent the blood from going backwards. So here is a diagram of the two, the three types of blood vessels and notice the overall diameter of the blood vessels are equal but because artery has a much thicker wall they're going to have a less space inside it, the lumen. Uh, veins on the other hand the wall is much thinner which means it's going to have a wider space inside it which is the lumen. Again arteries the blood it moves by the force created by the pumping of the heart and because of that great force pressure it needs to have a thick wall to withstand that so if the arteries gets weak and they don't have that thickness to the wall if there is too much pressure arteries can burst. And then by the time it gets into the arterioles, into the capillary, capillary only has one layer, the endothelium, which is the tunica interna. And then it has a loose connective tissue uh, covering it. So it is not very strong. It breaks very easily. And the only purpose for the capillary is for gas exchange. So that's why it is thin. Then from the capillaries, the blood travels through the venules. And then it goes through the veins to get back to the heart. Remember again, the blood moves through the 
veins by the skeletal muscle that surround the blood vessel and the, the uh, muscles kind of squeeze the wall of the blood vessel which kind of forces the blood up. Now, especially in the legs, once the blood has left one area, it's going to want to kind of pull back down from gravity. But because veins have valves, once the blood has left one area, the valves will close, which will then prevent the blood from going back into the space that it was before. And so there is valves all along the blood vessel that prevent that from happening. Vein is the only blood type, blood vessel type that contain the valves. The arteries and capillaries do not have it. Capillary bed is that web looking network of uh, blood vessels and they um, are made up of two th specific areas. There is what is called the true capillaries and the vascular shunts. Um, in times of when you are trying to conserve blood or let's say in a cold situation when you want to keep the heat in then you are just trying to kind of keep the body alive and so you're not really doing gas exchange so then the vascular shunts will close off and then it will prevent the blood from traveling over the capillary bed. Uh, the true capillary is the area where the actual gas exchange occurs. The picture on the left is showing the normal functioning of the capillaries, how the capillaries should work. So blood comes in through the artery, then it travels over through the arterial, then over the capillary bed. And so blood is allowed to flow and notice that it is all red, which means they are carrying high oxygenated blood. And then the oxygen is being dumped off. At the same time, carbon dioxide is being picked up and that's why you see a gradual change in the color of the blood but in times of emergency or in a stressful uh, cold environment uh, the body's trying to conserve heat or in the case of where the person is losing a lot of blood they're trying to keep the circulation going and the gas exchange is not an issue is not the priority then what's going to happen is these pre-capillary sphincter close off the capillary bed. So they close off the capillary bed. Which means now the blood is not flowing over the capillary bed and gas exchange is not occurring. So the blood travels through the artery, through the arterial, directly over the vascular shunt, into the venule, then to the vein and goes back to the heart just to keep the circulation going until you can get help. So the Vascular shunts are only functioning during times of emergency. In normal times, then the picture on the left, all of the capillary beds are functioning. 11.4 notes homework. Number one, what are the functions of the five types of blood vessels? Number two, what are the major differences between arteries, veins, and capillaries? Number three, describe the purposes of the true capillary and the vascular shunt.